Well, before we look more closely at that tune, I should mention uh, something about my technique of playing. I use three fingers on the right hand and the thumb, whereas often more traditional American-style players might use just the first two fingers, or maybe even thumb and first finger, as in the case of, uh, say, Mel Travis, Elizabeth Cotton, in fact, the whole generation of old-time finger pickers. Um, I like to use my fingernails, or rather, a type of fingernail. These days, I stick some on, and you could buy um, a product called Player's Nails, or you can make your own. These are actually made out of ping-pong balls, and they're stuck on under my real nail and filed down. I find them very effective. They're kind of clean sounding and accurate, and if you break one, you can always replace it without too much problems. I think that's about it. I keep my hand fairly high, as a classical player might do, but then I allow myself the opportunity to drop it down if I'm going to be damping the bass. I find that a fairly flexible right hand position works fine. You just need to be able to change it rather than have it too rigid. Um, good. Let's look more closely at the tune we were just playing. This one is called Buffalo. And you'll notice that it's made up nearly entirely of the same interval. That is, it's double strings, and they're played on one string, miss a string, the next string over. And the interval is called a sixth. Essentially, because the two notes are six notes apart. And if you look at the formula or the scale that this tune is based on, essentially it's the same scale as we harmonized earlier. It's like a minor scale, but with a raised sixth in it and a flattened seventh. So if we take A as our basic note, we could begin to investigate the possibilities of these six intervals and then figure out ways to use them. We could start with the A, go up to the F sharp there, that would be one group, and we could progress up the scale. Or maybe even go down further. The tune itself is a nice one. The bass stays down there rather like the Brunzi bass, except there's a little linking phrase. A hammer and a hammer. And it's got that triplet feel to it, which is fairly well accented in this tune. So it's a descending phrase, it's a link phrase to bring you in. Descending phrase in six, which is the place of hammer. And that's a little hook. And the only real change there from these parallel six all the time is when it goes to the turnaround, it's got a sus chord down into a sixth. So the E7 to D7 part of the blue sequence there is actually very nice. Instead of it just being, it's got the seventh in and the fourth of the scale. So it's a suspended chord which goes down there and it makes that little chromatic run down on the bass which I find very pretty. What to do after you've played the, uh, the tune is to investigate playing around the sequence or even freer using these same intervals. Um, all I can suggest is that you actually start with one phrase that makes sort of cross your mind, then double it. play some. In fact, let's split the screen and have a run through playing together. Up. Little 
sideways, bass going up, treble going down in six all the time. Going up to the sus, D, A minor. Now let's play around with six. Let's go through the tune again. Six. 